Respected brothers and sisters in Iman, having praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having sent salutation of mercy, blessings, and exaltation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I advise you brothers, starting by myself, that together we should travel a journey of consciousness, a journey of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says clearly, he gives us hope morning and evening in our entire life that wala aqibatu lil muttaqin. Anything we do, we know that there is end. Which end are you aiming? Which end do you want to go for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that wala aqibatu. And the good end is for those who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing what was right and abstaining or avoiding what was wrong. The on one of our khutbah today is again another statement of Amir al-Mu'mini. Khalifa Rasulillah. And this is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Radiyallahu anhu. Imam Ali radiyallahu anhu says the following. Yaqulu la tazlimanna idha ma kunta muqtadira. Fadhulmu tarji'u uqbahu ilan nadami. 
لا تظلمن إذا ما كنت مقتدرا فالظلم ترجع عقباه إلى الندم تنام عيناك والمظلوم منتبه يدعو عليك وعين الله لم تنم say la tadhulimanna idha ma kunta muqtadira that do not oppress do not be unjust if you know that you are weak and you cannot manage the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of qiyamah or even in dunya you know that you are so weak and so don't oppress don't wrong others don't wrong yourself he says, فَالظُّلْمُ تَرْجِعُ عُقْبَاهُ إِلَى النَّدَمِ For oppression, the end of oppression. Oppression only leads to regret. The path to oppression is regret. He says, when you oppress, تَنَامُ عَيْنَاكَ you go to your bedroom and you sleep, your eyes closes, and you think that you are okay. But you forget that the oppressed is awake. What is he doing? He is making dua against you. When you know for sure that Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hayyu, the ever-living, the everlasting, la ta'akuduhu, sinatun, wala naum. Slamba does not say Allah, and Allah does not sleep. When you oppress, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you. When you oppress and you sleep, when you oppress and you relax, know that the oppressed is making dua. And one of the ad'iyya, one of the da'awat mustajaba is the da'awah of al-madhloom, the du'a of the oppressed. فَإِنَّهَا لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابٌ كَمَا جَاءَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ Nothing prevents the du'a of the madhloom to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately. And these are areas and du'a that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer instantly. فلا تظلمن إذا ما كنت مقتدرا فالظلم ترجع عقباه إلى الندم تنام عيناك والمظلوم منتبه يدعو عليك وعين الله لم تنع في سورة النحل Chapter 16, ayah number 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ya'muru bil'adli wal-ihsan wa i'ta'i dhil-qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal-munkari wal-badhi ya'idukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon la'allakum tadhakkaroon that Inna Allah, verily Allah, ya'muru bil'adli wal-ihsan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding, Allah is enjoying al-adl, justice, wal-ihsan, and goodness. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding al-adl, wal-ihsan, wa ita'i dil-qurba, but also kindness to your kid and kin, your family and relatives. Good relationship with them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, He also forbids, He prohibits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forbidding al-fahsha, zina, and other forbidden things. Al-fahsha, wal-munkar, wrongdoings but also he forbids al-baghyu al-dhulmu oppression and injustice 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya'idhukum, He, Allah is admonishing you, La'allakum tadhakkaroon, that you may remember, you should remember, you should take these teachings seriously. My brothers and sisters in Islam, if you look around you, if you look in homes, if you look in communities, there is a lot of gold today. There is a lot of oppression and injustices taking place as we are talking now. In individual lives, a lot of gold. In families, a lot of gold. In communities and societies, a lot of gold. In the world, a lot and a lot of extra dhul injustices taking place as we are sitting in this masjid today. The question is, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love dhul? And what is the proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love dhul? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the Surah Ali Imran, Ayah number 108, Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, Ayah number 108, that وَمَ اللَّهُ يُرِيدُ ظُلْمًا لِلْعَالَمِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love injustice or oppression to the world, not only to you and me, don't need to your family, but to the lil alamin, alam alamin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to see dhulm taking place between animals, between human beings and animals, between jinn and human beings, between human beings themselves, between human beings and even a tree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love injustice and oppression. So then who loves? Who is inciting, who is instigating bull is shaitan. It's shaitan. Whenever injustice and oppression takes place, you can smell shaitan there. You can feel the presence of shaitan there. Shaitan works so hard. He wants us to fight. He wants us to hate one another. He doesn't want our unity. He doesn't want to see that there is peace on earth. Shaitan is awake. He's working so hard. He is using me and you. وَمَا اللَّهُ يُرِيدُ ظُلْمًا لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah does not want, Allah does not love, Allah does not like that oppression takes place Amongst his creation, jinn, mankind, and all that exists. How comes that we wake up? The news shows less peace than troubles and chaotic situation that takes place in the world today. How comes that in our homes, a lot of... How comes? So whoever... Is unjust, is following shaitan, and he is not doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. He is not. On the day of Qiyamah Ahba, Fi Surat Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, ayah number 47, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to the day of Qiyamah, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. We are living in dunya, at a time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to the past. He takes you to the past to see. He wants to see, are you going to be min al-mu'tabi al-ladhina ya'tabihuna? Are you going to be min ulil al-bab or not? Allah takes you and he takes you. Look at the examples of those who came before you. At a time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you to the day of qiyamah. Kama fi hadihi al-ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَضَعُ مَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ كَانَ مِثْقَالُ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلٍ أَتَيْنَا بِهَا وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِدِينَ On the day of Qiyama, dunya is gone, eh? Dunya is destroyed. Your house, your handsomeness, your beauty is gone. Your car, 
your temporary possession that you had in dunya, all this is gone. You are standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mawazin, the scales of justice will be established. The scale of justice is established by Allah on the day of Qiyamah. We and our A'mal are placed on that scale. We are being weighed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا No soul is gonna be oppressed. Allah is not gonna be unjust to any individual from the day of Qiyamah, not even to animals. In the day of Qiyamah, there is no fool. In dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want fool. Then why are we engaged why are we committed? Why are we advancing the agenda of injustice which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates? That is the question. Having oppressed, do we feel safe? Being the oppressor, do we feel safe? Ayahsabu an la yaqdira alayhi ahad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed some Zuhama Ukurich, Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl, Umayya bin Khalaf, wa Amthalu. Lama stakbaru, wa tajabbaru, wa tagaw fil ard. When their arrogance increased and increased, and they normalized their arrogance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed them, Ayahsabu an la yaqdira alayhi ahad. Or do they think that no one is able to deal with them? Yaqulu ahlak tumal and dubada. One of those tawagid says that he is talking on how he has spent his wealth, how much he is wealthy, and how much he spends his wealth wrongfully for wrong reasons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ayah sabu allam yara mu ahad. Does he, does he, doesn't he know? Does he think that no one is seeing how misbehaving he is, how unjust he is? Don't you think that Allah is ever over you? Don't you think, don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you? What is your wealth going to help on the day of Qiyamah? What is your dunya influence going to help you with on the day of Qiyamah? Who is going to save you from the punishment of Allah? How are you going to save yourself in the court of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the day of Qiyamah, you oppress and you move on and you assume that everything is okay. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we know what has been happening in Philistine for years. Over 70 years, Ikhwanuna wa Akhawatuna, our brothers and sisters, don't sleep. They don't get food except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them. They don't walk freely like we walk. They don't have hospital. Hospitals are bombarded. Children and women are killed. It is gold. It is oppression. The whole world has agreed to oppress these Muslims, majority. Of course, some non-Muslims, there are a few Christians who have also been casualties. Majority are Muslims. And not only that, as they are being killed inside, anyone who try to tell the world leaders that you are oppressing our brothers is also in a trouble. Many people have lost their life as a result of advocating for justice in Palestine. 
So Muslims thought that, oh, it's only a Philistine issue, right? Little did we know that this thing has been planned, well planned. It's not only Philistine. And if it is Philistine, are they not our brothers? Did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Mu'min lil-Mu'min kal-Bunya yashuddu ba'aduhu ba'ad. That a believer to another believer in China, a believer and another believer in America and Somalia, a believer to believer in Sudan and America, we are like one wall. You see this wall here? That is a believer to another believer. Yashuddu ba'aduhu ba'ad. Whether you are in Afghanistan or Pakistan or China, we are brothers. When our brothers are dying, we should feel it. When our brothers are suffering, we should feel it. Little did we know that the agenda is bigger than Philistine. One of the politicians in our America here saying that even if Palestinians didn't exist, we would have created Israel still. That is not politics. That is the reality. So then if it is Palestine alone, what happened in Somalia and what is still happening in Somalia? If it is Palestine alone, then what has been happening in Ethiopia? Is there peace in Ethiopia? If it is Palestine alone, then what is happening in Sudan? Two Muslim generals. They are performing Salah at the time of Salah and then carrying weapons to kill one another. And each one is justifying his course of killing his brother. In Pakistan, in Afghanistan, in China, you know how many Muslims are in concentration camp? How many millions of Muslims? We don't hear about it. Chinese government built prisons. They kidnapped Muslims, men and women. They are forcing them to leave Islam. They are forcing them to eat pork and if possible drink khamr. They are telling them that they cannot fast in Ramadan. They are forcing Muslimat, Muslimat, Mu'minat, Panitat to marry non-Muslims, Buddhists, by force. Somebody walks in your house and you say, I'm your husband. Because they have the support and the backup of the government. Few day, few weeks ago, you heard what happened in America. A brother who has been in prison for 25 years for a crime he never committed. We are boasting that we are living in the world of science and technology. Alhamdulillah, that they took his DNA did not match their claims. He was cleared. But part of the government, that state says that he, he has to be killed even though he's innocent. This person was an imam. He was leading the ummah in prison. And when he is dying, before he died, he said, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. He praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he made a dua, Oh Allah, give me life, let me live. In kanat al haya khairan If life is good for me. And oh Allah, make me die if death is good for me. He says that I'm ready. If this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for me, they injected him and his Salatul Janazah two weeks ago. Salatul Janazah was performed in one of the states. Is there justice on earth? And who is championing that justice? If not Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is there justice on earth? <laughs> Is that democracy of killing children, killing women, killing innocent people? Is that democracy? Is it the meaning of democracy? Killing innocent people. Killing you even when you are innocent. Supporting killers who are killing our brothers and sisters everywhere. It went to Iraq and it came to Syria and now it is in Lebanon. Yes, it never left Yemen. What makes you feel that you are safe in this masjid? And what makes the world feel that they are safe?
my brothers and sisters in Islam. In Surah Ibrahim, ayah number 42, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْأَحْرَىٰ Somebody may say, but how comes that they are killing and murdering, they massacre? Have you seen a, a, such a, an evil person? Have you seen such an evil person who kills? This is not just killing, it's a mass killing. And he comes and he justifies and he says we did the right thing. And this is just this is just a trial. We're gonna kill more. And the world is clapping for them. Anybody, the world is clapping for them. A group of unjust people. A group of unjust people, shayateen, they clap and they say that he's doing the right thing for killing innocent people. Is that the peace that the world wants for the world? Is that the peace that the world leaders wants to exist in the world? Why do we have refugees in the world today? Why do we have refugees in the world? Why are Africans traveling, dying? in Red Sea and other seas in the world, trying to make it to Europe, if it's not a result of bad governance, injustice and wars. Why are we here? Why are people who had their lives in their villages, they were okay with little that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them? Why are they in refugee camps? Some people are trapped, like in Sudan. They cannot leave the country, they cannot go back to their village. We hate one another now because who is supporting who? Two Sudanese may not be talking. Two Somalis may not be talking. Two Muslims in America may not be talking. Two Ethiopians may not be talking. Because who is supporting who? Don't you see the facade? The level of corruption and mischief that oppressors have caused a husband and wife who are married from two different warring tribes have divorced cannot live with you because you, my, my tribe is being killed versus your tribe what is the stand of Muslims on this what does Islam say about this Today's khutbah was not meant to bring solutions. It was meant to remind us that injustice is taking place and mischief is also taking place on earth. But do not think according to the ayah of Surah Ibrahim, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ Do not think even for a second that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware of what the unjust and oppressors are doing. Allah is aware. Allah is al khabir Allah is al raqib Allah is al alim He knows. He sees. <coughs> so then a Muslim with weak iman says, but why doesn't Allah, he's questioning Allah, why doesn't Allah deal with them now? That is not upon you. La yus'alu amma yaf'al wa hum yus'alu. How long is Netanyahu going to live? How long are the oppressors of the world, even in Islamic countries, going to live? Because these oppressors, some of them are Muslims. Muslims are supporting killing of Muslims in some Islamic countries. They are spending big money to sponsor fight in Sudan. Muslims, here they are promoting Islam, here they are promoting their masali, their interest. It's not only kufar, but even Muslims are promoting dhul on earth today. People in the name of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware. Allah is all-knowing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ 
لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ Don't you think that our life in this world is too short? 20 years, 50 years, 70, 100. I don't see anyone who is 100 years in this masjid. I don't see. And one uncle has to be maybe 90, 90 something, but not 100. I don't see 100. That is how, hakada al haya. Life is too short. Then you're going to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ Then unto me you shall all be returned. You are in the court of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you, interviewing you, interrogating you about the oppression. And I want to conclude with the following. Inshallah, next week I will come with the extension of this. When we talk about Dhulm, People think about just war. Yes, war is part of oppression, especially these wars, unjustified war. Killing the innocent, bombarding countries, this is not right. A Muslim is not allowed to kill his brother. A Muslim is not allowed even to kill non-Muslims without just justification. I cannot stand on the member and wage war. No, it's not in my hand. Like when we talk about Dhulm, please understand it in a bigger scope. One, there is Dhulm known as Dhulm of Shirk. And that is the worst injustice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya bunayya la tushrik billah inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Many people do ignore the greatest and the worst and the most severest Dhulm. That is the goal. When you are committing shirk and you are a Muslim, you have wasted a lot of your time, you have wasted your entire life, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ There is another dhulm, more hidden than shirk. Which dhulm is that? Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqala ya Rasulallah allimni dua'an ad'u bihi fi salati wa fi bayti ya Rasulallah can you teach me a dua a supplication, a prayer that when I'm in my house or when I'm performing salah I include it when supplicating to you O Allah فأجاب أبو النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قائلة الرفيق رسّد وقال سيد قل اللهم إني ظلمت نفسي ظلما كثيرا ولا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت فاغفر لي ما غفرة من عندك وارحمني إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم اللهم إني ظلمت نفسي ظلما it is ظلم of نفس you are on ظلم oppressing yourself This is Abu Bakr. وَهُوَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ Yani when he's asking Rasul this question, he knows that I'm already in Jannah. Yet he's coming to Rasul. He has stuffed. There is zulm amongst the family. A husband oppressing his wife. Wife oppressing the husband. Children oppressing parents. Parents oppressing their children. There is dhulm of ilm, honor and dignity. When you backbite somebody, and you talk behind somebody, and you try to destroy somebody, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. You are a dhalim. Be sure of what you say. Be sure. And tell him, don't go behind him. You are a muflis. You are a dhalim, dhalimun wa muflisun. The day of Qiyamah, you've been going to Hajj every year. Performing salawatul khams, ma'asuna. You fasted Ramadan and all other sunan in the year. Like Nasu sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, you are a bankrupt. Wa huwa man yaati yawm al-qiyamati bi salatin wa zakatin. You come with all these big deeds. 
But on the other hand, your salah is clean, your hajj is clean, your fasting is clean. Then you find that on the other side, people are standing and you know what is happening? This one say, oh Allah, he insulted me. And he never apologized. He backbited me. He took my wealth. He did this and this and this. We want, we want our hukuk, our rights. Bank of America is not there. Your debit or credit card was left here when you were buried, eh? Miskeen. So Allah tells you, give them their rights. Ya Allah, I don't have. min hasanatik. All your deeds, your hajj is given to Muhammad. Your siyam Ramadan is given to Abdullah. Your zakan sadaka is given to Ruqayya. You are left with no hasana. Other people are saying, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we need our rights. And then all their bad deeds are taken, put on you. You will then be dragged on your face to Yahanna. That is all. You enjoy it. Like in, you're going to face it. So there are different types of zulm. Zulm of even yeah, oppressing the environment. I want to conclude. When Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen, one of the advices was Wattaqi da'wat al Beware of the dua of the oppressed. You may be okay because you are jahil. You may be okay because you are foolish. You may be okay, allow me to use the word, because you are stupid of what is awaiting for you on the day of Qiyamah. Lakin Rasul advised Mu'ad ibn Jabal that wattaqi da'wat al-mazloom. Beware and keep yourself away and distance yourself and abstain from the dua of al-mazloom, the oppressed. Fa innaha laysa baynaha wa bayna Allahi hijabun. For that dua, is answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instantly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to be among those who are just and those who are practicing justice. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from oppression and injustice. Astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen. الصلاة والسلام على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين محمد بن عبد الله الذي أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين أرسله الله بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارضى عن جميع صحابة رسول الله ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذابنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباع وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم موتى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين الذين شهدوا لك بالوحدانية ولنبيك بالرسالة وماتوا على على ذلك اللهم احقن دماء المسلمين في مشارق الارض ومغاربها اللهم احقن دماء المسلمين اللهم احقن دماء المسلمين اللهم اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا اللهم انا نجعلك في نقور الاعداء ونعوذ بك من شرورهم يا رب العالمين اللهم رب يسر لنا ولا تعسر قتل من بالخير وبك نستعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين Brother, just before the come, you know what I'm going to say. The brother said that, you know, I want to go to Sabul Kaf, but after every salah, they're asking for money, money. So why are you stingy? You don't want to give five dollars. Five dollars, ten, to pay the rent. It is end of the month. If we don't remind you, say, why you didn't tell us? If each one of us pays our fifty dollars today, our rent is paid. In that box, there is 600. You remain here after Salah and count what, what is in that box. Please. This is by Allah. We spend a lot of money in going for vacation and this. Please open your hearts. 
make some automatic withdrawal, fifty hundred dollars we will not be talking about money. But if there is no money and we are coming here for services, we have to remind you, right? Fajizak Mullah 